by Gil Hale with Linda Hale as the videographer. I have not yet done one of these video postings to the website with repairs or upgrades to any of our pony cars. This is a first. So we are looking at working on a 1973 Mustang convertible. The other day I noticed a coolant leak that is coming underneath from an area just below the water pump and it was kind of a splash type of pattern tells me the front seal is leaking. Well, good enough for me to go ahead and replace the water pump. 47 years old is time. So, what we've got going on is a conventional radiator fan shroud fan that silver piece behind the fan in front of the water pump is a spacer and then we have a water pump pulley and the water pump behind there so with a 73 Mach 1 Mustang I had previously done an upgrade to the cooling system not involving the water pump um, and I liked it so much that even though it isn't really necessary to do with this vehicle in the short run I think in the long run it'll serve us much better the reason I say that is because the cooling systems on these older cars are fairly marginal at best we get away with it because it's just a little 302 V8 pure stock and we don't run this thing hard but it is 47 years old so what I plan to do in order to allow the engine to remain cool at prolonged idling and slow speed driving which we often do with this vehicle is replace the conventional fan belt driven fan blades and shroud and radiator with an upgraded system this has original hose if you take a look you can tell it's original because that's the original wire clamp stapled into the hose as it came from the factory there is also you may or may not be able to tell a little bit of bluish green residue indicating a leak and I can't tell for sure if it's a leak from the hose to the radiator inlet or the inlet and the radiator itself I'm not going to take chances I'm replacing the radiator first of all because I suspect it's the inlet into the radiator that is seeping second this is a very base radiator with probably two rows of cooling tubes I want three so what we're going to propose doing is after we pull this apart to replace the water pump replace a radiator with aluminum three row radiator a matching fan shroud that is designed to house two electric cooling fans the cooling fans will have the current controlled by a thermal switch with a thermal couple coupler that will be installed pushed in between the cooling pins of the radiator so it'll get a good read as to how warm the coolant really is before it turns the fan off and on and then the current going to the fans will be coming through a relay instead of directly through the thermal couple switch this has worked out nicely for the other Mustang the Mach 1 I expect nothing but good things with this while we're at it new radiator hoses upper and lower new thermostat bypass hose a new heater hose and new clamps gonna do the whole thing get it all done in one shot whether it needs it right now or not we're also going to be installing an overflow coolant bottle for coolant overflow and recovery so that when the coolant warms up it will exhaust through the radiator cap 
like it normally does, but instead of being spit out onto the ground, it goes into a collection bottle when the coolant cools off. Instead of sucking air into the radiator, it'll suck the fluid, the coolant, back in. So that's a good thing. Okay, on to the next item. Cut. Okay, we're back. What are we gonna do to this nice vehicle? My cane, I'm pointing to the aluminum three row radiator that will be replacing the OEM radiator. It is larger than the original in width and it has an extra row of cooling tubes. For a 302 pure stock two barrel engine, it's probably overkill. Tough. Matching up to that is a metal fan shroud that bolts to the radiator. Mounted on here will be two electric cooling fans. Those cooling fans will be controlled first by an electrical thermal couple sensor that will send current to a relay. When the relay is engaged electrically, it will then send current to the fans and cause them to turn. When the coolant temperature being sensed by the thermocoupler drops far enough, it turns the fan off. For instance, if we're going down the road at 40 miles an hour, probably will be no need for those fans to be on. It'll keep the engine plenty cool by itself. But when it's idling for a long period of time, or being driven slowly, then the fans will come on and provide far higher airflow over the cooling fins than the standard belt driven fan that came with the car. Radiator hoses. I got a set of hoses that look like OEM and even have the OEM type of wire hose clamps stapled into position, just like the originals from the factory. Just to make it look good. New bypass hose, new heater hose. Here's a new water pump. It's a high performance water pump, nothing crazy, uh, just something that's high performance, high volume. I got a special set of short bolts to mount the drive pulley on the water pump with a short set of bolts so we can get rid of that extra long spacer in place to make room for the mechanical fan blade that came from the factory. We don't need it, it's in the way. We also have a set of special bolts I got to mount the water pump. The old bolts are probably fine, but they're 47 years old. I wanted to have a nice set of bolts just to make sure we wouldn't have problems. So there you go. Over here is the overflow tank and recovery tank itself. It is also polished metal to look nice next to a nice polished radiator. So that will be going in. Now, these little things have the mounting brackets on them for the electric fans to mount onto the fan shroud. And all the wires coming from the fan relay will be put inside a plastic conduit and then zip tied into place so it looks nice and clean and we don't have wires flopping around. As for the water pump itself, Normally, a person would take off the fan blade, take off the shroud, go in there, pull off the water pump, clean up the mating surface so any old gasket material is gone, put new gasket on the gasket sealer, put in the water pump, and reassemble the shroud and the fan blade. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it easy on myself. Doing it that way means get my hands stuffed up with the old radiator, limited access. Since I have to replace a radiator anyway, I'm going to drain it. And then I'm going to remove the radiator after un 
connecting the hoses, including the transmission cooler lines. And that leaves me a lot more room to access the water pump bolts from in front of the engine. It makes it easier to work on, easier to clean up, easier to see what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to do. So the next section is going to be Linda videotaping bits and pieces of the work as I'm doing it. Are we running? So, 1973 Mustang convertible 302 two barrel C4 automatic tranny aftermarket air conditioning. Water pump front seal started to leak after 47 years. So, today, this first segment, I am planning to go ahead and at least start the tear down. If I feel up to it, I'll replace the water pump. I might do it another day. We'll see how I, how far I get. Now, in the event we do proceed with putting it back together, I'll be installing a new radiator, aluminum, with a fan shroud with two electric fans, which means a fan relay switch and a thermal control switch as electrical. Because of that, my first operation here is to disconnect the negative battery cable. And for those folks who don't know, on a negative ground car, you always disconnect the ground cable, in this case, the negative cable, because that kills all of the circuitry in the car. So nothing is left to chance accidentally sparking a problem hitting positive power or a tool that is grounding. So the cable is off and now I can work on this thing without any concerns about causing problems. Now the next thing I want to do is drain the coolant from the radiator after which I'll start taking off the radiator hoses, which are original. 47 years they've been attached to this thing. There's only a little over 20,000 original models on it, but it still might be difficult to get apart. It's a little bit tight in here because we have a four-post lift that this Mustang is sitting on. So... I'll waddle my way over and get the drain pan for the coolant because we captured the coolant and we put it inside plastic containers to recycle it. We don't just dump it, although we technically would be allowed to. Now there is at the bottom of the radiator, um, I believe, I'm going to find out, the passenger side, a radiator drain valve, also called a petcock valve. Now why they call it petcock, I have no idea, because I'm not petting anyone's cock. I'm just saying. And yes, it's over here. To open up the valve, I use a pair of pliers so I don't damage my skin. I don't know if we can get a good bead on this or not, but the petcock valve is way down here at the right lower corner. Once I have the coolant coming out, it might be more visible. Okay, the pit cock, I loosened it with the pliers. I can do the rest if I can by hand, so I have better control of it. And I have a coolant pan placed strategically underneath. Oh, but I forgot something. What could I have possibly forgotten? What you need? Well, 
In order to do what I need, we have to lower the car back down. Take the cap off? I didn't take off the radiator cap, so it's building up negative pressure vacuum in the radiator as it's drained. So it's going to dribble out and it's up flowing out. Okay, that made a difference. Now, if you want to take a look under the car, you see how clean this thing is. It's not like it's been sandblasted or anything, but uh, for 47 years old, it looks pretty good underneath. I don't see any rust anywhere. If looks you see awesome. some, feel free to point it out, but I sure don't see any. Looks excellent. Not too bad. So you got the pet cock open and it's draining. It's wide open, it's flowing nicely. Of course it's hitting the front cross member so it's splattering around a little bit, but it's, it's dumping. Maybe while it's dumping I can start looking for an empty container to pour it into. Because that'll be the next thing we have to do as it gets full. So here we're just dumping the old antifreeze that we drained. Thank you. tray underneath the lower radiator hose because when we bring the car down that's part of what we get next. All right. Half inch for the inside nut for the nut that catches it. I have a 5 8 11 16 flare. We'll see. All right and what are you removing here there Mr. Gill? It is 5 8 so you were absolutely correct. So this is a transmission cooler line? This is transmission cooler line the top one and it has to be loosened and taken off so we can remove the radiator. And here, there's two nuts we're concerned about. There is a nut that is brazed or mounted onto the radiator, and then the flare nut that actually puts the steel line into position and tightens down. If you only loosen and tighten one of them, you'll cause problems. So it right. takes two wrenches. The inside nut, half inch. Outside, Jim surmised correctly, five eighths. Oh, man, they make those things tight. Must have been all those years of sitting there unused. I must win it. Um, we can try. make sure that the base nut is still in place and not spinning as I do want to cause damage to the line. If it cause damage to the radiator fitting, no big deal. I'm replacing the radiator anyway. Okay, so now yeah, loosen the bottom. Call the other number. Hopefully I don't <laughs> drop really this wrench. I tell call the other number. If I do, we know how to get it. Looks like you already cracked it loose. It cracked loose real easy that time. Nice. Doesn't mean it's not still tight. It's not finger loose yet. This is a top radiator mount. I'm just going to loosen it. I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to see if Son Joe can loosen the other one. And while he's doing that, now I'll proceed with the lower radiator hose. Loki, okay, can you get me a paper towel, please? Mm -hmm. My hand is very slippery from the coolant, so I have so to make sure it's dried off. <laughs> you want paper towel, Joe? Sure. Hand Thank that you. to Joe Gill. Thank you. See, this, this good way of extra help. It is. I'd be walking <laughs> around more than actually doing work otherwise. <laughs> Now the good news is, I still remember how to do this stuff. The bad news is, I'm doing it and no one's having any fun except watch me screw things up along the way. Now this screw has a hex head. If it was too tight to loosen with a blade screwdriver, I could go ahead and loosen it with a hex head. Now, 
I am going to disconnect with the radiator because I want the radiator out. It has to disconnect from the water pump side later because I'm replacing this hose anyway. So I'm kind of doing double work in a sense. But because I'm not trying to beat the clock as a flat rate paid technician, I don't give a rat's ass. Yep, my hand is getting all gooped up again. Hard to say if it's a sweat or coolant. It is kind of warm out. And I'll be breaking the sweat. Not from excess work, mind you. It's because it is a little humid and warmer than usual. Turn eight to return to break it loose and then pull it off. I might have to get channel locks to do that. I'm gonna try doing it by hand first. Why? Because I'm already here. Is your uh, is your catch basin down there in the proper position? It's as proper as it can be. Okay. It's not leveled. Not moving. Okay. Off to get the fan shroud. So you put the bolt up here on the fender cover somewhere it doesn't roll away and get lost. So I'll go on the other side. This is pretty much all the way out. Not, not yet. You'll see why. Okay. Whoop. Got it. I just put it up here somewhere where it doesn't roll away. Perfect. Okay, now if you go on the other side, you should be able to lift that shroud straight up and out of the way. Kind of, but you can't remove it completely because a fan blade's going to be in your way. I just want to make sure that nothing else is holding it below. I think it goes into some clips down there. Just pull it straight up. Yeah, it's just clips, but you can't you can't clear the fan. Okay. So now what we're going to do for my next trick ah. is loosen the fan belt to take the pressure off of the water pump pulley and um, then loosen the four screws mounting the fan to the pulley in front of the water pump. Then we can pull the fan blade out with the shroud in one shot. Okay. Now, the bottom of the radiator is supported by a pair of rubber grommets and a saddle. So Joe, once you take that top brace off and put it to the side where the bolt was, you should be able to pull that radiator straight up. It might have to rock it a little bit. We are not gonna be, uh, be using, oh, hold on, let me get this off. The drain piping. That's gonna be, there we go. Okay, now, there you go. Try to tilt, it. Yeah, tilt it uh, towards the, the... This way? Yes. Tilt it this way? Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't drain coolant on the car nice. as you go by. Yeah, there you, go. you need to put that on the grass. Try to avoid hitting the car. <laughs> that will damage the Whoa. fish. Keep it tilted up there a little bit. There you go, just yeah. like that. Now keep the nose up a little. You just want to have none of the holes down low. So, I'm filming now. Listen to Tim. The fan shroud comes out very easily. Amazing how that works. <laughs> Three heads are better than two. <laughs> turn one eighth of a turn at a time because of the distributor. You need a ratcheting box wrench. Yeah, real well, ratcheting open end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's done. Now, in order to give it slack here, this lower nut has to be turned away. Now the top nut has been loosened, I can do that. If I can just get the wrench on here. Okay, to catch up where we are, the radiator is out, the fan shroud is out, the fan blade and front pulley are off. The top radiator hose has been disconnected from the thermostat housing 
And now Tim is trying courageously to remove the coolant bypass hose. That coolant bypass hose is especially important to replace any time a water pump job is being done or regular cooling hoses are replaced. If you don't do it now, it will ultimately end up doing a Murphy's Law on you and burst at an inconvenient time and you're going to wish you had taken the time to do it. The good news is, it's not too, too hard to do. The bad news is, it doesn't look like it's that easy. <laughs> I may have to come over where you are to get leverage on that side. Okay. On this side is off. Now, if you want to use those big dentist tweezers, you might be able to squeeze it off. You don't care about ruining this hose? I have a new hose and I have new clamps. Linda, will you grab those big channel locks on top of that brown box there? Black Thank handles. you, ma'am. Stop the video for a minute. And that you might want to grab and twist a little bit if you can. Let me see if I can do To it. break it loose. I think I have to come over where you are. Okay, I'll move the hell out of your way. Do a little prying. Are you a prying kind of person? Yes. <laughs> okay. As long as we're aware of it. All right. I need this light. Thank you, sir. All right. Looks like we're dealing with a little bit of. I maybe... have a bigger screwdriver if you want one that's longer. Um, I there's a little bit of uh, corrosion, maybe gook, uh, yep. kind of season it all what's together. That's causing it to seize. Right there, it's wiggling loose. Are you stuck in here? Are you uh, this. Yeah, there's just nothing good to pry on right there. Let me try a bigger screwdriver, bigger okay. flathead. Not necessarily the. If that doesn't find something else, you might want to do it. No? Not yet. Maybe, uh, actually, that gets, uh, I can pry off the nut on this one, and if it doesn't get it off, it'll at least loosen it up, where I can maybe yank it off with that big pliers. This is actually working nicely. Right here. Are you okay? What was that? Yeah, I'm good. You didn't cut yourself with a condenser, did you? No, all good. Okay. Success. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. All right, now. <sighs> the hose this has to come out. These are very unique uh, hose clamps. <laughs> I've never seen, I've never worked on oh, sending. Is that, um, is that a radiator hose? This is a or hose. A uh, heater hose. It's going into the uh, water pump, so it's going to have okay. to come off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I shouldn't have put that bar, that pry bar away, but I did. And I'm assuming you're going to reuse this? Yeah. Okay. The heater so. hoses, I'm not too worried about. They're usually very durable. A lot of folks replace it at the same time. We could, I have some, but they're a pain in the ass. And they first they're easy to replace. I'll take this. I'll give it a shot. Here you go. Okay. So, what Tim has been doing, he's been taking off the cooling system bypass hose between the thermostat cover and the water pump. And he also took off the heater hose that goes into the water pump. Earlier, he took off the upper cooling system hose. Now he's doing the lower, um, lower hose. It's off already? Uh, it's on there. It's just I loosened it. We're okay, so... We may need that pry back again. Really? Yeah. We have a special... We have a, a very <laughs> special tool we use for this next step. This one we think we're done with that tool. <laughs> this one? Yeah. 
This was designed to assist in removing a door panel trim piece for cords, <laughs> but it works great for removing hoses that are stuck in place. Take this, give me something to pry against. Right there. Oh, this is our lower radiator. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Looks like we just got pushed back out of the way a little bit. Okay. Oh, the happy hooker. The happy. I hooker. pushed it down there to drain it. Yeah. The low okay. Point that took tension off that hose. And I think if I were, because those these barbs are big, I think if I back that uh, hose clamp off a little bit more. Okay. That's okay. It got caught in that uh, cross. Uh, you put it on top of the air filter, won't hurt a thing. Are you reusing that? Nope. Okay. That new one. All right. Okay, now, Tim correctly noted that the power steering mounting bracket and some of the alternator maiden bracket are being used to secure themselves with bolts to the water pump. So they have to be loosened and maybe even moved out of the way, which can be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> this in keeps mushrooming into a bigger project. Such a pain in the ass. If anybody, and this isn't challenging folks to be courageous, wants to call it quits because it's so damn hot right now, I'm okay with that. I have all week to play with this. Um, let me get some water and then we'll start fighting all these uh, four connecting bolts there. Okay, yeah. are we still recording, I hope? We are. Okay. <laughs> And before we started this project, Tim was kind enough to go to a nice lunch with Linda and I. We have a lot of iced tea. If anybody has to fill the river, the Genesee <laughs> River, now is the time to do it after you wash up. And huh. we have a place to wash up and drain the, drain the snake. Oh, did I say that on a publicly transmitted YouTube video? And cut. Let's see if it's all uh, the shorty study is over here. Oh, I'm going to go to Long 916. I think that's what that is. Uh, this one is... Half. Here's the long Half one sixteen. Oh, okay. You need that over there? Uh, yes, I will, but I have to get an extension with the swivel box first. I'll be a few moments. I got to find one. I put that. You feeling that pull there? Actually, yeah, I'm feeling, feeling, feeling rotation good. through here. Good. Big help. Good. Hopefully some of it's making it over to Dad. It should circle. Circulate around. Yeah. Would it help to shut that door? Probably. Well, Just more it's, heat over there. Okay, let me see there, Joe. Oh, here it is. Miss Linda is recommending shutting that door behind you. Shut that barn door. Keep that uh, heat over there. Yeah, it is, you know what, I'm starting to feel it here now, so I think you're right, it's coming back to a shorter enclosure and just think, we were thinking of Sweet. taking that door off and making more wall space. Good thing you didn't. Yeah. Good thing. Someone was thinking. Alright, what's the big guy there? Let's see if this is going to fit that. Fits it. Now let's see if I can break it loose. I think you're going. Let me let me see here. We may need a different length uh, box to clear. Let's see. We're doing this backwards. Let me make sure we're that is lefty loosey. And it only has to be loosened a little tiny bit. Okay. Here's something. With I, got oh, okay. I got it. Okay. That'll be enough to loosen it. Now we crack that thing loose. I think that's a 5 8. Yes. This is a 5 8 here, I think. No, not this one. This is three quarters. That's too big. 
five eighths. Thank you, sir. You find it? Uh, your son found it. Who said not to invite Joey? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fitting that it's Father's Day. There we go. You're right. That uh, took the tension off. You got lucky. All right. Sometimes it's better being lucky than being good. So, um, those would be next. Those were 9 sixteenths, well, we said. Actually, yes. What you might end up needing to do to get this bracket off is actually remove that bolt. Hopefully, not. We'll see. Do we have to take this bracket off? Or can we just slide? There's a water pump. So we're going to find out that. Oh, it, that, it would be uh, geared. That covers in the way. The water pump. Well, no, it's not geared because it spins off the belt, right? Yeah. There's no uh, mechanical gearing behind yeah. it. Yeah, it should just slide we'll up. We'll find out. It might rotate out. I'm rotating out and rotating back in with three different things. So it might be easier to pull it apart. The good work getting it back together as easily. We may not be so lucky. Wow, well, look how long that bolt is. Yeah, that's one that goes into a water jacket. I have all new bolts also to replace those. Crazy. There's that guy. Wow. Okay. Yep. Collision. There's that guy. Long one goes on the bottom. Now we need, uh, what did we say this was, uh, 5 eighths? Okay, Joe, you have a 5 eighths socket there? Or do I have it here? I would just have the one socket. What's this guy? Mm -hmm. That's probably it. That is it. You might be able to use the impact. Yeah. There's no tension on this. That's down. 50%. I'll put that uh, right another one down on there. I'll the, get the magnet in a moment. All right. You, you can loosen the other two bolts at the other end of that plate, and that'll make it easy to move it around when we pull that pump out. That's bigger. Those are bigger. Okay, there's probably 11 16. I'll be back. It would have made too much sense to make them all the same size. That's the magnet. <laughs> if I can get it to not stick there in the middle. Okay. I didn't find the 11 16. I found 3 quarter. If that isn't it, I'll look for another 11 16 or square. I think it is 3 quarter. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And this is still the same 3 8 inch drive? Yeah. All right. Nothing big here, so I'm not doing half-inch drive stuff. I have a half-inch drive electric wrench, but that thing, it is huge and heavy. Yeah. A nice lightweight 3 8 is just a perfect size. Okay. So now you can move that plate out of the way that you're going to need to, in fact, I'm sure of it. To clear the pump when the pump gets loose and to pull it out. Well, you want me to take the whole power steering plate out of there? Just a plate you just loosened the last two bolts on. That's a separate plate unto okay. itself. And that's. Well, it, it would appear to me, and I don't know the system, but it would appear that this bolt goes all the way through and holds, holds the entire power steering pump in place. Oh. Um, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like this you one. Might, you might be right. Go and take the top one off. See how much. When you have swing the plate out of the I, way. I, yeah, this bolt, if I take this out, the whole power steering pump's coming okay. out. Okay, just that, take that the, goes all the way through. Take the bottom one off then. Okay. And that way we can swing the plate around out of the way as the pump starts coming out. All pump right. housing. There we go. And you put that right up here with the other ones. Okay. When half the engine compartment is empty, I'm going to start worrying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that'll interfere anymore. Okay. 
Um, so we have a nut or a bolt back behind here that we have to, I guess we can take this plate out to get this out of the way. Yeah. Um, and that was probably our same size here. Now the trick here is make sure we don't lose the spacer. Okay. So I'm holding that, so if you pull the bolt out, I'll put the spacer to one side. Got it? Yeah. All right. And then that bolt, so if you want to pull it out, I'll put it away. Watch our bracket. Perfect. Um, the alternate, alternate are still plugged in. That's okay. If you can set it down top of suspension pieces, it won't go anywhere. Okay. Another old mechanic trick. All right. Um, we need, what is that, a half inch? Yeah. Um, half inch. Great. I don't see where that, that might have gone underneath. Yeah, I don't think that was half inch anyway. No. I think that was nice. I think that went underneath that tray. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm looking for a half. I don't think I have a half. Seven sixteen. There's nine sixteen. We had a half inch box, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Is that That's right there. Right there. Oh. Do you remember where all these bolts go? No, but we'll push some new ones in and we'll see where they seat and we'll know what, what length to put in. Dad, I'm starting to think about that Fisher Price locomotive adjustment that I took apart. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. It's a pile of parts. Dad, yeah, put it back together, please. I've had a few of those projects through the years. Yep. I can hold that. Something I can do. Your uh, warm air uh, oh, that's okay. choke. Yeah. That's what that is, right? Choke, yeah. I guess? It's just warm air to um, your carburetor cool engine start. Right. Just put that more for looks than anything oh, a else. A socket would be very helpful here because this is a tight what, space. What, what socket is on that impact now? Is that a half or is that? That's a... like five eighths. Okay, what are the other sockets you have up there? This one nine is six nine sixteenths. That must be a half that dropped. dropped. Okay, we can raise this up and get that. It'd be worth it because you're gonna be. Able or to before we were, you stay there, so I have to open the door. Let right me here. just peek and see if I can reach this thing underneath here. Here's all right. You can use it electric if you want. Sure, great idea. As long as we're producing by the sun, might as well use it. Another very long bolt. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of There's a few that length. Um, this looks like it needs to come off as well. Yep. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. I see a bolt right there. I'm not sure if that. I might as well. Take that. Yep. Happily. Right on top of the fender. Yeah. Oh, there's another one on the other side, symmetrical. Yeah, there's either nine or ten of these things. Is that holding in the water pump? Yeah. Okay. It's holding the car together. <laughs> yeah, watch your toes. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Okay, see so if there's any more bolt heads. If not, then we need to go ahead and. There you go. Um, why does it feel like there's something? Oh, yeah, it's hidden way back in there. Oh, that's awesome. There's a bolt back in there. Uh, is a plate it's, in the way? It's behind this plate. Can the plate uh, slide out of the way? Well, we're going to take this bolt out that's holding the power steering pump. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to do that. Okay. Um, oh my God, so, <laughs> uh, let's see, that power steering pump's going to come down and fall. And you can rest it right on top of the front the suspension strut. Um, and it's going to be held in place by two hoses, right? And that's fine, too, as long as you don't have the hoses suspend and hold the weight of the pump. Okay. Where is that it's big sock right here? Is that it? Yes. All right. And, and this guy. Electric. Hey, Joe, I may have you hold the power steering pump. So okay. it doesn't drop. Um, while I... Linda can hold the camera. While I um, fight 
uh, that bracket. So it's probably going to be a little hefty and it's going to be way off balance for you, but um, this whole thing's going to want to come down. You going to have it? Right there? Yeah. You got it? I think so. Find right. out. Yeah. That might be enough. Alright, so this was... Yeah, you put it right on top of the air cleaner also with the bolt through the... Well, no, we may need to put this bolt back in there to hold. And I need to get... Oh, I see that here. Where is that half inch now? I think it's underneath you. I think I can set that. Is that? Yeah, it's about to drop. That's the 916. So I need Sorry. the other one. Is it under... Here it is right here. <laughs> Got it. How are, how are your fingers doing? They're good. All right. Just gotta watch when the bolt comes back in. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oops, that was my finger. Get this to go on there. All right, there was the hidden bolt. Right there. Oh, look at all that. Oh. That's okay. Well, it's going all over. We have paper towels down there. Okay. No, it's not going on paper towels. No, kind of. It's, it's, it's going to be fine. Is it going to get worse? I can move the tray. No. It's no. the mouse of it right It's there. already out. Okay. Yeah. I'm blocking all the air, boys. Yeah. Sorry. All right. I've never removed a power uh, water pump before, but there's there it is. There it is. Oh. Right, so we can, so uh, I'm gonna set this guy right over here. Yep. And then we're gonna relieve Joe's problem with uh, that big bolt. Yeah, this guy can, here? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, problem is I can't see anywhere. We're like, let me throw this light here. Is there a hole back there that you can see, Joe? <laughs> That? No. Old mechanics have a saying about that. If you can't find the hole, shit. put a little hair around it. Uh, funny. It's going <laughs> to get through that. I'm just saying. Funny. Thanks, Go. I'm, I'm, sorry, like that I'm joke. just saying. I never, I never use that phrase. <laughs> You're not in a hole. I don't. That's funny. Um, I think it's up back in there somewhere. Let's yeah, right there. There's the hole. Oh, there, there we go. go. Good move. I think they have a hole, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, Whoa. now, right. the mating surface for the gasket for the new water pump is <laughs> all along here. Right. I can't tell if that gasket is completely gone or not. It looks like it's still on there. If it doesn't come off in one piece, you have a new gasket, correct? I have a new gasket, and I have a gasket spray, but it is air powered. Yeah, this is okay. gonna break up. I'm gonna get the pneumatic stuff off? set up then. Kind of like we got part of it off. Well, there's a part that stays behind that's the problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Loki, I'll need your help. Where is it? I can get it from. The other garage, the air, uh, air compressor. It is. Come on by here, I'll show you what we're going to be doing. Linda is going to go get the air compressor. I wasn't sure if we need it or not. But what we have is a pneumatic gasket scraper. It goes back and forth and knocks the old gasket material off of the surface that we're mating to. Okay. It makes a horrible job a lot easier. At least for the person that's not having to go get the air compressor. Now, Linda has a hose for the air compressor, it may not be long enough. So I got a hose. Can I get you to take a picture? Yeah. Of me in the car? Let's see here. Something's Okay. Get some 
pressure first. Is yeah. the um, regulator opened up? Is that for 100 pounds? And then here, there's a regulator. Here you have to turn to give it more or less airflow. way you'd want to do it. Um, the other way. This way? Well, actually, either way, uh, actually, the bevel the way in is probably safer. This way? Yeah. Okay. So you just run it on here like this? Yeah. go across the battery terminals. Yeah, good thing it's not <laughs> grounded. Get that done and then okay, I'll hold the light for you. Or whatever. Here we go. I think this might be it. 